Good morning, everyone. My name is Nadine O, and this is Let's Paint and Draw Along. I'm here with Don Stevens. We're just getting everything situated. Grab your Sharpie markers, your paper, uh, your pigment liner, and get ready for some art, expression, and all that kind of good stuff. Um... If you are watching this in Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, I want you to say hi and tell us where you're watching this from. And if you're not a member of our Facebook group, go over to Facebook and join Let's Paint and Draw Along and become a part of our art fam. And if you see in the background, right about there, when your eyes are open, it's on just one of the t-shirts that you can order from us. And you can do that by going over to um, Don's Instagram page. Um, also in our Facebook group, you'll see information on that. He's posted that. We're working on the website. The website should be up momentarily. Uh, I'll check with Don. He's been tweaking a few things. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, go right to the main home situation and also check out what Don is also up to in the neighborhood and look at some of the work that he does personally to get to know him better. And as for me, I'm just all about letting you know that you are not done yet. If you're over 50, you can be creating art every day in every way. And that's all I have to say. Yeah, buddy. So grab your materials uh, and get ready for a wonderful day of creating. We're going to, we're going to pick something to do today. And um, I hope you had something to eat because I think it's going to evolve something that you eat. <laughs> All right. Hey, Don, how you doing? Still here trying to get my coffee together still. All right. Sorry about that. I had a late run this morning. So excuse me, everybody, for my tardiness. Uh, no worries. We're going to handle our business. Everybody grab your tea, grab your coffee. Get ready for uh, a wonderful time today. Uh, if you see on the uh, left-hand side here, um, make sure it's on your left-hand side. I'm actually looking at a lot of different monitors. So it is on your right-hand side. Uh, that's a piece that we focused on and worked on last weekend involving food, breakfast to be exact. Um it looks like a, a continental brunch we're going for today. Uh, are Looking we at the photographs, it's got dessert and coffee there. Yeah. Danish and coffee and got a yeah. plate full of danishes and stuff. Which one you want to go for? It doesn't matter to me which one you go for. Let's okay. let you pick which one you want to go for. Okay, it sounds good. Let me drop this in here. Uh, I'm I'm handling uh, uh, the the. Uh, Patreon members as well. Oh, okay. Make sure they got that. Now, what I'm going to do um, for giggles, I am going to go over. Let me make sure that's up. I'm going to share the screen. And the first one I'm going to share is... Do, do, do. Uh, we can go very simplistic or we can go more continental. Okay. The Doesn't first... matter. We got a photograph. That's up to you and how you want to strategize with the crowd today. Okay. Right. So I'm I'm torn. And I tell you, I am torn <laughs> between you because they all look good. I'm torn. See, now between... you know, now you see my dilemma now. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I'm torn between this one that I'm sharing right now. Let me see. Okay. Okay, I see it. I see it. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, let me get out of that one. Okay. And, and I'm torn between that one and 
Uh, this one. <laughs> I okay. know it's crazy. I know. See, I told you it'd be hard to pick sometimes. That's why I don't be, you know what I mean? It's so hard. That's, see, that's why I say just draw everything, everything. Now you see why I say everything's easy. Let's draw everything, everybody, because it mm -hmm. gets hard to make a pick. Mm -hmm. It sure does. And, you know, I think... um. I think um, the, the, the two of them are, are workable or doable. And I mean, we can put them together. We can fuse them together if you wanted to. Oh, goodness. If that's an idea you wanted to do. You know, I'm always open to all these different ideas to show you different challenges to push your creative oh, abilities mercy. further. So say, for instance, if you did have you use torn like Nadine between two photographs, I would say let's try to do them both. Right. Okay. So we're both in there. So you let me know this time, though, Nadine. I'm I'm gonna let you rock with this one, man. I like yeah. that chocolate and that orange on the chocolate. The chocolate I know with the drizzle. Yeah, I thought man. that was, I you know I was really digging that one actually yeah, to tell I you did. the truth. That's different. Um, I've never had orange slices like that. I'm being and that's honest something. With you. Yeah, I've never had them. How was that to have that? Was it, it sweet was, and you know, tart the at the sweet same time? And tartiness, yeah. Yeah, it was quite, quite enjoyable. So okay. let's see. Um, what I wanted to do was um, I'm going to close out some of these other ones mm -hmm. because I have a lot on the desktop. <laughs> no, nah, no problem. I have the same thing uh, going on over here. Okay. So there we go. Okay. All right. So All right. Now I have both of those up to you. All right. I got the the uh, one that you sent me, the three that you sent me earlier. So I got. Ooh, is that like crusted cinnamon on top of that thing? Which one? The Danish, the the little Danish with the spoon and the, and the uh, drizzle of the oranges slices. No, see the thing on the right is uh -huh. uh, their version of a tiramisu. Oh, okay. So, right. I thought that was had crusted cinnamon on top of that thing. No, like that, that's that's powdered chocolate, unsweetened. Oh. Wow, that's even that's that's still just as good. Powdered chocolate, yeah. Powder with powdered cinnamon. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I was thinking cinnamon. So wow. Yeah, that's powder. Uh, so let's see. I doubt. Okay, I gotta do Making a couple. My fat days. man kick in early, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know okay. my fat man don't be waiting. My fat man be ready to jump out first clip. Right? Oh my God! You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's something. Okay, yeah. so I gotta find the one. And well, if you don't find it, I got both of them, so we can switch back and forth in between to show how you would use that. Like if I was gonna do it the way we was talking, right? With the uh, uh oh, where's the other photograph? Oh. There it is. That one. I would put the the um the orange rings up to the top and then put that Danish in the middle between what that, uh, with that ice cream. Yeah. That's ice cream with chocolate in it. Uh, let me see. Is this the one? Yeah. With the coffee next to it. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, the one with now the that, the, the name of the place with that, uh, place the tissue there, I wouldn't get into that, you know, you wouldn't I mean? get into that. So do you want then the one that has the ice cream in the front? Is that the one you're talking about in place mm -hmm. of the um no I was just saying it doesn't matter because you see how you have the the uh, dessert to the left and the coffee to the right and then yeah. you see how on the other one you have the or a close up of the oranges and everything right yeah so then what you would do is this is just an idea now I would take away the napkin oh, spread out okay. the coffee and the juice I mean, the, the coffee and the uh, ice cream and uh -huh. put that plate right in the middle there. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, that? gotcha. All right. That's what I was talking about doing things like that. When okay. you don't have one photograph that may have the whole thing. Okay. You know, how would you piece it together and envision this plate smaller? You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we got an exploded view of this piece. Mm -hmm. But it's not hard to reduce that down just because that corner is missing. You can put that corner in, mm -hmm. you know, and just reduce the size once again. That's all that is. So, yeah, if you if you want to jump on it that way, then we I think this one will probably be our first landscape one. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because to do it as a landscape probably would be a little better than the portrait format in this one, in this idea. We'll have more room to play with. You see what okay. I'm saying? Okay. So, so if we're going that route, let me know now. What's route we're going? Okay, we're so going, Captain. Okay, Captain, Captain. Um, so what I did was I posted both um the one with the orange with the drizzled chocolate and a tiramisu mm -hmm. and then the other one with the coffee cup as a reference mm -hmm. um with the dessert and the somewhat um pyramid coffee yeah, yeah, the, yeah with the with the uh receipt with the name on it that we're yeah. gonna, mm -hmm. okay so i actually posted both Okay. Because like, right. if you wanted to, you can put that tissue in everybody. I'm just saying, you know, to go with lettering, that's a whole nother idea in the piece. And then now that brings new aggravations and rulings and, and you know, alignments and all that good stuff doing the lettering. But mm -hmm. if you want to, you can do a loose one on yours, everybody. That's up to you. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on with everybody is the hardcore structure of these two items with the napkin and then Reducing the size of our orange and what was the name of that again? Uh, tiramisu. The and the tiramisu. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna call it the tea Danish. You know what I'm saying. The uh, tea Danish. <laughs> because I ain't gonna remember tiramisu. I, I see. I'm already messing it up already. I put two M's in there when it should be two M's. The tiramisu. You know what I mean. <laughs> so it's, right. I'm silly, so don't mind me, everybody. So it's these two, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can yes. see both, right? Yeah, I can see them. They're, they're okay. stacked on the on on the on the on the page there, and okay. then I have it on the laptop over here, larger. So I got both of them set up for me to look at larger. Okay, fabulous. Now for everyone um, out in uh, internet land, in the cloud, in the metaverse, or whatever. Um, if you're not a member, go over to uh, Let's Paint and Draw Along in Facebook. I have posted those two reference photos that you can follow along and use as a guidance. You can, you know, take and download, put it on your computer alongside or whatever, have it on your phone while you're using your computer to follow us. Yeah. Or move along on your own terms and then come back around and say, I want to follow you guys. <laughs> right. That's the maverick that I like talking about. You mavericks out there. It's a couple of you out there. You know who you are. I don't have to name you. You know who you are. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly know who you are. But yep, yeah, and there you go. I'm on the landscape tip. There you go. Got it. Let's see. Let's back up just a little bit because I had it on Zoom. Yeah. So let's see if I can back that up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. We'll push this forward a little bit. We doing markers, right? Yep. Oh, okay. Markers, everybody. Get your sharpies out and everything, everyone. We're gonna have some fun with this one, man. All right. Oh, I got my Sharpies. I got my king size sharp. Where's my king size sharp? That's my favorite, Nadine. Yeah, my king size. There he is. You can see everybody got a whole big bag of markers. You see? And I got another nice. bag in here, you know? So right now, I'm not doing the classes at Abington right now with the kids. Oh. So that's the bag for the markers for the kids. I got okay. another bag that's just for me. Okay. You see, so that's why I say everybody, when you when you uh, get supplies and things and things that you really enjoy, try to stock it up. So then this way you don't have to worry about getting things when times get rough or when the economics are not, you know, really, you know, you, you're challenged just like at the pump. You're challenged to say, all right, do I buy this paint, this marker, or do I buy, you know what I mean, these chicken wings from a Chinese restaurant? Right. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes those fat chicken wings are all good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, man, especially the tip. The chicken wing tip is oh, always the part that gets me, man. It's crunchy. Oh, my God. All the juice and the salt is in that tip. Yeah. And if you just had plain steamed rice and you had that, it would be seasoning the rice. 
There you yes. go. That's what I've done. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, let me come back down to earth, baby. I had to come back. Ooh. Mm. My God, because the Chinese restaurant around the corner just started doing their chicken weed. So let me calm down. I'm like, you know what? I'll be right back. And it's an emergency to have it upstairs. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, God, you better cut your mess, Don. You know what I mean? My bag, baby. My bag. <laughs> right. But everybody would understand it because stomach is in there. So, all right, everybody, let's look at it. Which one would I start with? How would I start that? Mm -hmm. Well, let's get our spacing together first on how much space we want. Because we're really we're literally doing like how Photoshop would do. Mm -hmm. We're tearing the piece apart to put it back together the way that we wish. Nice. Okay. We'll say it again. We're tearing the pictures, the photographs apart to be able to put them back together. Now, if we were outside and we were just looking at somebody or we looking at a scene, then I would say to you, we're snatching two to three parts out of several places to put them together. Mm -hmm. So you literally would look, 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 and then put it together and then your final place would be where you would be staying. Mm -hmm. So there's all types of approaches and ideas and suggestions on how to get your image there. That's what I like giving in a lot of these two as well. Because a lot of times people don't have uh, those ideas together, like how to really you know, utilize what you got to get mm -hmm. to what you want. Mm -hmm. And once you get it, you'll, really, you'll find out that, hey, that's how Photoshop works. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now that I'm out of the way, hey, everybody. Hey! Now that I'm out of the way. <laughs> Now that I'm out the way, let's get started a little bit here. All right, I got my, my two markers here that I like to start with. The micro marker is on the table there. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take the regular Sharpie, and this is where we start looking to say, okay, I'm going to look at the parameters, the width. That's why we said landscape. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to start with the coffee cup over here at a certain size, you see? Yeah. Now remember, we're doing this in markers, so in the beginning, you gotta just touch just lightly, you see? Mm -hmm. All right. Don't worry about that spoon just yet. You see what I'm saying? We are gonna probably do something with the other spoon rather than that one. You see, now we have the cup here, all right? You see that, everybody? I'm not worried about what's in the inside of the cup. I'm not worried about everything. I'm just worried about the placement of this item over here. Notice how we're looking at how that bowl is set up or how that plate is set up. You see the basic idea that I got there, everybody? Yeah. See that, Nadine? So that's the first basic idea. We can come put the handles in later on that cup. Uh, Hey, and maybe even that sugar pack. Let's put that rectangular shape there, like so. Yeah, there it is. And it's almost that one's looking trapezoidal, almost on the on the paper there, with that. You see. So now that we got that basic idea, I come across now. You see. And I'm saying, okay, what do I want? I'm going to bring that one down a little bit, the ice cream one. So I look at the ice cream top. I'll make it a little bit smaller. See what's happening? Mm -hmm. So I'm making it a little bit smaller to fit my idea on the page, following the perspective of what that ice cream is looking like. I might even have fun and just let it run off the page, too. I've done those things, too. You see, there we go. You see that? That's the ice cream container down there, the dessert container. And so now I'm going to put, yeah, there we go. The plate is here. See how I condensed it to make it go with what my plate is doing here? Mm-hmm. So you want to have them at the same depth or the same folding in space, you know what I mean? Close to the same perspective. There you go. 
Notice how I left the spoon out of there. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I got that together. All right. Now the tricky part is going to be getting our dessert right here and our two oranges right there. What you think? Yeah. You feel it? I'm I'm getting there. Okay. If you don't feel it, we can switch it up now. Just put the spoon here and then do something with this space here and here. I say go for it because the more we fill up the space, the better it is, right? Well, yes and no. You wanted to have a good composition to pull your viewer in and make them move around, make them say ooh and ah like we like hearing and seeing, you know what I mean? Yeah. When they leave the responses, they go ooh, ah, everybody loves that. Now, me and you are not the, or you and I are not the only ones that enjoy when people pat us on the back, you know, right. whether it be verbal or physical. We all love it. So, yeah, you know what I mean? So that's the whole thing with that. So let's see. Let me switch my picture up now. So now I can put that idea up. You see, so you worked with, I worked with one photo first, everybody, to get spacing together. Right? Mm -hmm. Now that I got that together, the other picture is an exploded view. Because she wanted us to see the textures and everything. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. She wanted us to see the textures and everything on that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good, that's a good photograph. So what I would do is... We're going to act as if that plate is yeah, starting. Now, this time, I'm going to start with the plate, everybody. Now, I'm going to get my trapezoidal shape going. See, now it looks like it's sitting up a little. No, nah, it's all right. It's all right. This way, down this way, then bring it across here and here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. So you see the change that I had to make? Mm -hmm. I came too short. I brought it down to touch our dessert that's here on the left side. Mm -hmm. So you see how I got that trapezoidal shape now? And you see how we got the power of three working now. We also have space for that napkin, or we can take that bigger spoon and lay it right in here in between. That'll look kind of sexual, though, but it's okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. See, I didn't even talk about that where composition can allude towards other things like in comic books and cartoons. Mm -hmm. When you have the illusionary effect like that. See, there's a lot of things we can talk about, you guys. You know what I mean? Where you can add in and think about and all of that. But notice how I'm, I'm just leaving this for right now and talking because I want everybody to get the concept on how we reduced this one, Nadine, to be in between the other photograph. Mm -hmm. Now, me, I like the sexual connotation. You know what I mean? So I'm going to put the spoon, my spoon in here. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want the spoon or you want the napkin, Nadine? Which one are you? I think the spoon, because it also has the, the, the reflective quality about it. Yes. It's also... You know, however you point it, it's like line of sight, like where you want the attention to go. There you go. You got it. That's why I said the lead in right in here and this avenue right in here. Because mm -hmm. the desserts is going to be in here when we get that started. The oranges is going to be smaller back here on the plate. You see, and then we're going to change the position of how the oranges are on the plate because we have to make the oranges fit the perspective of what our plate is doing. That's why I put the plate first over here. Mm -hmm. You see, and then we'll come back to put the fillings in. And here, notice I didn't worry about none of the fillings in none of these, you see? Right. I just want everybody to get the suggestion of simplification. A lot of people have a problem with that when they first start doing their drawings. Well, let me not say a problem. A lot of people have an issue with wanting to be perfect. So you'll see some people trying to draw strict to the edge mm -hmm. and moving real slow. Not a bad way of drawing, just a more difficult way of drawing because it's not forgiving. You know what I mean? As soon as you mm -hmm. do what you think is a mistake, now you may have to trash it, erase it, or cover it over and start again. Whereas with this suggestion on how to keep things open with a sketchy format, it gives you the ability to move things and make things permanent at an easy pace rather than worrying about it from the beginning with doing mm -hmm. it the other way that you might see some people doing. A lot of self-taught people do draw that way too as well, everybody. 
So I don't want you to be offended by our, by our suggestions. Just try to add it to what you do. Mm -hmm. Perfection is a lie. Repetition is the truth. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. With that being said, everybody, let's move a little bit more forward now. You know? And then now when I get in here, I'm looking at, okay, my Danish, it almost looks like one of those, uh, what's that, Mr. Good Bar or something? What's those other bars that got caramel and nougats in it and everything? Oh, my goodness. You know? But mm -hmm. if you look, everybody, you're making a half round barrel, basically, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put the bottom on there. Why? Because we want that to look like it's breaking up. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And we change the position of that because now I'm going to put the spoon right here on the tip here. So I get the shape of the spoon first. And a lot of times that's a dome shape, but it's triangular too as well to be able to put it inside your mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. And now I got the stem off the back around about the uh, uh, five o'clock position, everybody. If we look at this like it's a clock, Six o'clock would be here, five o'clock would be here, four o'clock, and three o'clock would be up here. So we want to start this angle off on this five o'clock side, you see? Mm -hmm. And then make it come off the back end like so. You see, and then now with the with a spoon or a fork, it gets thin in the middle, right, everybody? Mm -hmm. But then now as it's coming up, because it's bent in the middle for us, you know, positioning it for what it does. Now I would make it wider here, coming down towards the bottom of the page, which would be your foreground, you see? Mm -hmm. So you see how it leads you in this way? Mm -hmm. Then it leads you right up into the candy bar. And then now we're gonna have the two uh, 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 um, rings or slices of orange, full slices of orange there. Cause now I hope you guys are getting, and everybody's getting the idea. And, and Nadine, I hope your confidence is getting stronger with this suggestion of how we're drawing with the marker, not worrying about if we're making, making a mistake or not and all this stuff like this, because it's unforgiving if we're not using paint with this, mm -hmm. okay? Meaning that this overlap here, we're gonna clear that up by putting the shadow work and the reflection work in the spoon. Mm -hmm. You see any other strange overlaps, we have to make it with the shadow and everything. Another thing that I would like everybody to take in the suggestion is that once you get your angle going, that's it. You got to go with it. It's not a thing where it's like with pencil, you can change it. Oh, let me change that a little bit. No, this is the hierarchy of it. We want to place it and say, okay, I'm confident in where that line is there, or I'm not confident what I'm going to make that line do. Because once again, like how we said last week, and most of the times I make mention to is that as soon as you place a mark on the page, you just cause the problem for yourself. Now we got to resolve the issue. How are you going to resolve the issue with the content and intent that you got going? And that's pretty much the battle. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say, Nadine? Or yes, no? absolutely. Okay. I definitely say it is the battle for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything to add to that, Nadine? Or you you good right now? Um, I'm just like looking at it going, boy, I didn't think we were going to combine them. Yeah, I told you we don't be knowing what we're going to do until we get yeah. on the day. Doesn't that feel better? Yes, Rather it than, does. Yeah, it feels more exhilarating, more, you know, exciting because you don't know directly a week ahead what you're going to do the following week. Mm -hmm. No, I used to hate that when I took classes. I only had one professor at Art and Design High School that when we would come in, our syllabus and everything was wide open. And uh, we wouldn't know exactly what we were what we were going to be doing each week to week. And I loved it. Right. Oh, I loved it, man, because it was like, it puts you on the spot. It's like being out on the street, on a street corner when you're painting. Mm -hmm. You're pretty much put on the spot. If a customer or somebody comes up, and said, oh, that looks whack, or it doesn't look good, that doesn't really look like that building, that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. So you're going right at it on the street, and, and that's what I, because you don't know who's going to walk up, you don't know who's going to say something. So I pushed all of that together. That's why I enjoy doing it this way. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and I hope you guys understand that. I know Nadine understands it now. She gets excited with me too as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we don't know what losing, we're going to do. And I'll be losing right track of time. Yeah, man. <laughs> you going to make me choke on this coffee, man. <laughs> Sorry, I do. I mean, I'm like, what time is it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, man. But a lot of people do that with us now. Indeed, they just shot to tell us, man. I mm -hmm. wish they would just let it out already, man. You know, but we'll just get them, let we'll it get out them. like a fart. Come on, there you go. Come on, man. everybody together. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know. TMI. I shouldn't have did that. My bad. That wasn't Nadine's thoughts. That was Don. All Don, right there, everybody. But you gotta free yourself. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Got to. If you don't, you're in trouble. Okay, let me put the circles for the oranges. So now look, the first one I'm going to put is going to fill the space here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make it more elliptical because the top is going to come down, meaning the top half here is going to come down and give you a nice little squishy movement. Mm -hmm. You see, so we have that there. We're actually changing up the size, the proportions, and the mm -hmm. composition of that plate. Mm -hmm. Now watch, the one on the back is almost like putting a half a dollar behind it. Bring it down though. The more you bring that idea down, the more elliptical it's gonna feel and the more like it has a connection to the plate. Mm -hmm. You see that? How I did the two shapes there? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You see? Now, if you don't do them like that and you do them like upright circles, that's okay. Just know that you don't, you're not looking at the absolute of the perspective, you're looking more so for an expression. So that would be more so like your abstract expression is, you know, uh, some of your uh, Kukoshka people that use figurative movements and things like this mm -hmm. uh, uh, to not worry about perspective. You just put flat movements there. You know what I mean? Uh, Larry Rivers is another one. He does that a lot in his works. Stuart Davis does it in a couple of his works where you're not really worrying about the perspective, you're just putting it there. So if some of you just put two circles there, that's fine. Just work on the idea of looking at things when they're flat. Mm -hmm. Just take an orange out. It doesn't have to be the same type of orange and all that's going on with our picture. We appreciate Nadine for that, but you know, if you wanted to replicate this, you can take one of those whole holes or something, put it <laughs> on a plate. You see, yeah, you see what I'm saying? It's the same shape. A whole hole, maybe a Susie Q, you know what I mean? And then, you know, cut your orange up or your mandarins, your mandarin oranges up. And you don't have to put syrup on if you don't have, but if you have the Hershey Kiss chocolate syrup, drills it on top, you know what I'm saying, Nadine? Mm -hmm. And you got a makeshift of what Nadine had on her trip so that you can examine that to say, okay, how would I draw those discs of oranges? Stand up and look at it. Sit down and look at it. And you'll notice how the back edge, this edge here that's up top, mm -hmm. is falling down. It dictates how the perspective looks. If this is too far up, then it's going to feel like we're standing up and looking straight down on it. If it's all the way laying down, then it feels like we're looking through and then we will be expecting to see Nadine on the other side of the table <laughs> or whomever on the other side of the yeah. table. You right. see? So with this view that we picked, it's like we're it's like a personal view of you looking because I, I see the idea of what Nadine had with this one. It's like it's almost like you wanted to be like if we do the drawing of that, like you can really reach in right. and start eating. Yeah, and start eating. I was getting hungry just looking. Yeah, buddy. That was the idea for the egg one that we did last week. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have a reference picture that we can go off of so we can go deeper into that idea. Mm -hmm. this week you see it it's working like a charm it's riding right in it's almost like an advertisement so a lot of people be asking me like yo is that a paste painting illustration or advertisement i said it's a little bit of it all because if you look in certain magazines and things they'll still have line drawings like this where black and white but then you have to question is the ai and all of that but before mm -hmm. we get to all of that craziness you know what I mean? It's just the idea of using these things together. Like, all right, the next part would be where it's center on that, you see? Now you can do a guesstimated center with that there. We can say this center is right above that one there, you see? So then now, you know, the, the um, 
everything that's sliced or all the fruit and everything, it functions on how the pizza does, you know, the eight slice theory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can go here and then here. You see to start making slices. Uh, here, 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 here. You see, and I just do guesstimations. I don't try to be perfect with it. If you're one of those individuals that feel as if you need to be perfect with it, then really blow up the picture, count the cells, mm -hmm. and then put the amount of cells that you see in there. Once again, I'm an expressionist, everybody, a figurative expression. So I like to express the idea more as a feeling more so than a preciseness. You know, I'm more, more so worried about you connecting loosely with the idea and say, oh, is that an orange? Wow. And then moving on rather than saying, that's the best orange drawing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> He's got every corpuscle, every little nook and cranny I can see is so excellent. I don't worry about that, everybody. That's the part that kicks everybody in the butt trying to, you know, do this idea of perfection. I don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. I let the viewing audience decide if it's perfect to them. If they say it's perfect to them, then it's okay with me. Mm -hmm. If you're happy, I'm happy, then we move on. That's the way I deal with customers and things like that. Yep, a lot of times the viewing audience will let me know when the piece is done because they'll start making certain comments and I go, uh-oh, beautiful, I love it. Oh, I love when perfectionists come around. And they say they want artwork done. As soon as they say, I love it, I send that text right back and say, it's a done deal. Come get it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, why well, hold on to it if you say you love it? Right. If you love it right now, come get it right now. It's done. You know what I'm get saying? it, get it, get it. There you go. So, you know, and you might hear other artists speak differently about that matter. You may read about Da Vinci and all these guys and how they would deal with their viewing audience and deal with their patronage and, and stuff like that. But it's an interesting read and understanding, you see. Mm -hmm. So now what I was doing while we was talking there was just once again, still just putting the, the pulp and the uh, slice count inside. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing a loose one, you see. I'm not really worrying about the absolute of what's absolutely there in nature. What I want to do is get you to feel that, wow, those lines that he put together really does feel like an orange. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I can I can see that. That's not a nectarine. That's not a, a apple. You see what I'm saying? That's not you know any other fruit that you can name. You know they won't say lemon because it's not a certain shape. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just put everything. After a while, you can almost do it from memory. You see? That's the way I like to do things too as well. I look and then go for it especially in personal work, because that's what people are looking for. Your ingenuity, your your ability to make something happen to intrigue the human eye. That's what everybody, whether they say it or not, is another issue. But when people react to your work, that's what they're looking for. Like, all right, if you ever heard somebody say, uh, it's not exciting, it's not popping, it's not making me, you know what I mean, move. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to say. They're trying to say, you know, oh, it looks too much like a photograph or, oh, mm -hmm. it doesn't look exactly like this. You see what I'm saying? So right. that's why I don't really worry myself about those things. When I found the expressionist and expression, expressionism theorems, mm -hmm. then I understood what was going on. All And it, this goes all the way back to Titian and Rubens and all these guys back in that period that we like to talk about in academia, they would take free license, you know, creative license, as they would call it, to manipulate and change things. Now, if you don't read the memoirs, you don't know. So you're thinking they're doing the whole academic thing. If you go read up on some of these artists and their techniques, like Franz Halls and people like this, you'll find out that it's a lot of different augmentations that artists do that is particular to that artist that we appreciate that we copy. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, hand and eye coordination. Mm, yeah. That's what it is. Like when you see me do this circle and do this in here, this is hand and eye coordination, mind work together. Now you're going to mimic that idea so that it can reveal itself on your surface. Mm -hmm. 
You see, that's the way it works. All right, look, I can say that drizzle is going to come. And we can have fun with the drizzle now. Like, we can drizzle on the spoon and come across back over to this other, you know, plate. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because this other plate had a spoon in it, too. So if I really wanted to get funky, I could do a triangle shape because that's the power of three. Mm -hmm. And and triangles pull, pull the eye in. If you notice, we got a triangle working now. That's mm -hmm. the power of three in there compositional A. I think we talked about that a while ago in a couple other drawings that we were doing. Uh, the power of three? Yeah, the power. Well, when we talked about compositional A's, when I talked about how some artists use the alphabet to make composition, you know, mm -hmm. C, two, the letters, you know, one, two, three, sevens. Uh, a lot of times in the Renaissance, you see T shapes, whereas mm -hmm. you see Christ descending from the cross, uh, Del Greco, uh, you can see his elongated shape, but you see the arms coming across. And if you just look at how everything is set up, it's a T-shape. Mm. Or even at the bottom, he's got one of the thieves like turning up. So it's almost like a J-shape. Okay. Yeah. To go with the whole idea of, oh, I'm, I'm painting Jesus. I'm using the J-shape. You see what I'm saying? As mm -hmm. a design element to bring out Jesus. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So this is what people would do. They would use sevens a lot. Oh, six. Six is another compositional aid that you would see. Eight is another one that's popular. Mm -hmm. You see? So this is what these things, like you can almost look at this as, as an eight. The two oranges together. So what I'm going to do is I'll just start the drizzle. Let's see where my drizzle is going here. And then over top here. Yeah, here we go. In here, and then we'll dance it up later so that it'll look like it's more on top. Yeah, there we go. And then you see how it is on the picture there, but then how would you want it on yours? You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to add some more character to mine. You see? And I don't wanna fill it in all the way black because I want it to seem like it's shiny still on top, you know? So then now I just put a couple of darknesses here and there. And then those whites that's coming out is, is gonna, what I want it to feel like is reflections on that shiny chocolate surface, mm -hmm. you see? So then now I would start that just loosely because I know I'm, I'm happy with that area. Okay, that's chocolate there. Say, for instance, I wanted to keep this such so that it can be uh, scanned into my computer and then, uh, how would you say, colored in, you know, taking a copy of it and then coloring it in and whatever you want. I would leave some of those lines, like how I said, open so the person that a color in, you know, would be able to have an opportunity to make that brown if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. To really express the idea of chocolate, you see. So these are some of the other options you have with that. Like you see how I did it so far, Nadine? Oh, yeah. So you do it right over top. Now, it might not come out looking the same as what's, you know, on the screen, but you're taking the idea and the expressive quality of it. Mm -hmm. You see, and you want us to believe that it's moving on there, you see. If you did what you think is a mistake, then make it try to make it look like it's running off of the orange. You see the hit back here, and then it would go back up and then over. You see it then down and then over. You see, just to have that perspective idea happen of overlap. You see how I'm making it go down the side of the orange. You see, so it starts to feel more and more like it's really something being overlapped. Like now, if you look at the picture, some spots is dragging. It's not like you can tell where the person was pressing lightly and mm -hmm. then started pressing heavy again. You see that on the sides there. So I would mimic that movement by having some of it not, you know, some of it just dripping as so like that and then picking up back up on the orange as so. You see, but you would do it right over top of the orange drawing that you already did. That's the beauty of it. And in this one, I don't have to worry about if I bring something to the finish line too early. 
you see, I don't want it to look like fur, so I have to make up a mark that, that looks like it's really flowing. You see? So that when people look, they don't say, oh, you know, is that a waffle? You know what I mean? With syrup on it? <laughs> you know? It's like, no, no, no. That's, you know, orange slices with chocolate drizzled over top. Now, some people don't even understand that combination. They'll be like, why did they do that? Yeah. <laughs> right. For real. Like, you know, so this has to be like an upper, uh, upper till uh, uh, restaurant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's really, you know, gourmet and, and things like that. You know, but most people don't understand that because I tried that before, you know, on a date with people. I made my own stuff and I tried this drizzle orange stuff. On lemons too as well. Nah, the person looked at me like, why'd you do that? You know? <laughs> so I'm trying to be special. I'm trying to make yeah. a moment. Trying to make you feel special. Yeah, you know, we got orange slices with chocolate on it. That's got to be gourmet. You know what I mean? That's what I thought. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But, you know, to those, you know, hey, you know, it's whatever. So they watch, look. Now I get into my cake. Well, no, 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 no. I go back to the chocolate thing. And then now we're going to make it seem like that chocolate is coming either to the spoon or from the spoon, you see? Yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah. Both of you guys are enjoying your, your idea too as well. How it's going? What you think, Nadine? How we looking on yours? Very good, I guess. All right. Can you see your Danish and everything and your oranges on there? See, this is where we can slide over and start playing with the, the, the shapes and refining the shapes now of the coffee cup or the cappuccino cup and the small uh, dessert, the other dessert on the other side. Mm. So this is where I'm flipping back and forth. Like the spoon on that plate is the spoon that I'm using here. I just took it off the plate. You notice what I did? I yeah. took it off the plate, made the plate smaller, made the items larger. That's uh -huh. an advertising technique to, to, to beef up when people want to see something. Mm -hmm. Make the item of, how would you say, interest larger. And that forces your viewing audience to start looking at that more and it plays on their psyche more. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my God, do you see the nuggets and the crannies in there? And I wonder what that's on top. Is that chocolate on top of that thing or is it cinnamon? See, that's how I would be thinking. <laughs> it's like, well, is that cinnamon or is that right. chocolate? You know, what is that on the inside? Oh, my God, is that a cream or is that chocolate creamy stuff too? So then now we got to mimic that movement of the layers, you see? But I would use a dot and dash to show this idea. You see, because you might want to change it up as you go to make it look more like a bite than a slice. You see, it looks like it almost has caramel in there. Did it have caramel in there too, Nadine? Oh, uh, you know, uh, or you don't remember? Uh, usually tiramisu has like um, espresso. Okay. And the chocolate, not the caramel so much, mm -hmm. but um. And layers of like chocolate and some kind of cream. Okay, because I can see the cream in there. So now, everybody, if you look and see what I did, you can look and see, okay, where are the chocolate parts at? And I can even put some crumbs like how it is on the picture that'll go towards where the spoon is, you see? So that's almost a double D because I got the chocolate drip coming down to the spoon, you see? Mm -hmm. I'm debating whether or not to bring that chocolate drip this way or to bring it underneath the spoon to drip up the cup this way to say we put some of that in the cup. You see, these are different things you can do when you're pulling things out of context. Mm -hmm. See, we taking the context of these two pictures, blasting them apart, and then we uh, gluing them together, almost like how a, um, a, 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 a collages would work, a person that does collages. Mm-hmm. We're doing it, too, as well. This is the concept of where Photoshop came from. Before all of that stuff was around, you know, the technique would be you would trace that and then place it where you wanted to, you know what I mean, to have two photographs or three photographs working together or more. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, this is endless idea on how many photos you can take things from and put them together. You know, that's just, this is just, you know, an artist technique. And then now put a couple of crumbs here and there, smaller ones, you know, make them look like real crumbs on a plate. Yeah, oh boy. Now, obviously, these that's darker in certain areas is going to represent the chocolate, you see. And then we have to make up a mark that doesn't say chocolate, that says the creamer. Mm -hmm. So think about, you know what I mean, those light and dark areas and how you're going to handle them with line. Pure line. Now, this is where you could say, well, Don, can I use my micro marker in there and get everything else going? Yeah, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Because what I was going to suggest is coming back with the micro marker when we get to that stage and putting in some of the pulp marks for the oranges. Mm -hmm. You see, putting the porousness of the on the on the uh, orange rind. Uh, even for the uh, dessert inside the the the, the little you know serving uh, Danish mm -hmm. over here you know, using a micro marker to really go in. Mm -hmm. Now with the uh, cup of coffee here, you had, a, you had a handle here and then you had a handle here on this side. Mm -hmm. From what mm -hmm. I remember. Um, that? that The other side was a piece of the spoon, but yeah. Ah, you see that? Well, I got to go with it then. I got to yep. go with it. You got a two-handled mug. Yep, I got to go with it. Or I would have to make another spoon coming out from over here. So that'll right. be the back end of the spoon. So I would have to decide if I want to do that or not. But notice, now you see, uh-oh, I have clearly what we would probably say is a mistake right. by Don. But this is how we play with it. All right, I'm 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 saying it's a double handle cup. So I'm going to go handle here like that. And then now I'm going to put the little shape in here to say that we're seeing a little bit of the top of that handle there. There we go. You see? So I'm playing with it. Now, the only way you're going to know that it's not that is by what? Going and checking out our page and then checking out the photograph and say, hey, <laughs> Don, you didn't you didn't follow that photograph, Don. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. say, hey, I took creative license. I'm an expressionist and, you know, I understand your your, your confusion, but Thank you for your, you know, your delight in my work and um, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Have a nice day. Right. Because it's not about right and wrong. It's about my expressions. It's about how you express yourself on the surface. And if you can get us to believe those lines on the surface, I remember my professor said, a lot of them said, said boy, Don, you're going to have a hard way to go, but sooner or later, everybody's going to go your way. Why? Because you can actually draw and make things, make people feel things. When you're like that, you, you know, you got to watch out because it can go either which way. People will walk with you because you seem phenomenal or people will walk away from you because in fear mm -hmm. and really won't let you know that it's fear on their behalf. They'll try to make it seem like something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, see? So then, this is the things that I like to talk about and all that good stuff when it comes down to it. Not to really be arrogant about your work and your skills and your abilities, because there's always somebody out there that's going to be a little bit more observant. That's number one. And then, number two, is always going to be a naysayer out there. Always. Always. It's a, it's a human trait. You know, even when you're at the top of the pinnacle, you'll have somebody that'll walk up on you and say, you know what, that's trash. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the Philadelphia, something? yeah. You're in the Philadelphia Museum, or you're down in DC, or you're in Chicago, New York, or LA. You know, you're major. You're you're the top of the pinnacle, or you got all of those working for you, like Kanye Wiley. He's got the whole national platform noticing him, and you'll still get somebody to walk up on him and look at his book and say it's trash. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, like that's incredible to me. You know, that's incredible that a person can still formulate their lips like that to say somebody is, you know, something that they're not based upon their personal observation. Incredible. But that's a human trait. So if I know that, I don't stress myself. I just tell myself, all right, where do I want to take this piece to? 
What is my thought? What was my intent with mm -hmm. this piece? My intent was to put two of these things together to make it seem like one piece. And I believe we've we've gotten that together thus far. You know, yeah. Now that's see, oh, okay, that's chocolate on top of vanilla ice cream or some type of butter ice cream, right? Wouldn't you say? Uh uh, that was a pudding. And there oh, was, was chocolate. A pudding. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. What and white chocolate? Some, and there's chocolate on it, some kind of like pudding kind of thing. It wasn't my favorite, but mm -hmm. I just remember it being like a pudding. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we don't have to stress that. We can make it look like it's ice cream in there, Joker. We can make it look like whatever we want it to be. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm digging the vanilla ice cream idea. Okay. And a cinnamon stick, it. you know what I mean? Or, or I think that's a piece of uh, uh, chipped chocolate that's in the cup. Yes. Okay, so then uh, since most of my activity is in this area, I won't mean that piece of chocolate this way. I may take it out of the cup and put it on the table here, oh, put it on the nice. uh, dish mm -hmm. to replace the spoon. So I'll put a couple of what look like uh, chocolate chips on this side, you see? Mm -hmm. So then look, on the bottom of that, I'll start where the chocolate is in the front on the bottom here. And remember, you got to make up a mark to make us believe what it is that you're seeing, you see? And now you have this clear area here that I'm going to make look like possibly ice cream or something. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to follow what's there thus far. You see uh, here. And then now it's here. See how I did that? So then now I can say if that's clear, if this is glass, right? Mm -hmm. I can put a little indentation here in the inside and then show how that plate is reflecting or, re or refracting through. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So now we got the plate coming through. So that's another connection within the connection, you see. Now on this side, like I said, I would I don't know. What do you think? Put it inside the cup or put it on the plate? Put it on the plate. Or do both. Put it on the plate? All right. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like wood chips, it looks like, but it's chocolate. Mm -hmm. And you can make any type of jacket, you know, thickness that you would like. The whole aim is to make it look like it's still on the plate. And it feels like it's chocolate candy chopped up, you know, in the shards to be able to use, you see. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go overboard too much, but I put one underneath. Use your curved shapes and your and your rectangular shapes to make us believe that movement even more. So, like that in the front here, I would show my thickness there. You see, and then put a line back on each one of these to say that it's a thickness. So I don't want it to feel like celery or something in there. Mm -hmm. You see, and then now I just use a couple of dark lines and things and get a chocolate feel. You don't want it to feel like meat or steak or chicken, mm -hmm. you see? Because mm -hmm. these are some of the shapes where people would say, oh, is that that or is that chocolate? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see, even for me, my plate is looking too sparse. It's looking like it needs something else on the plate. Right. That's what I was thinking why we did put it on the mm -hmm. on the plate. And you know what, Nadine? What we just did was, is what you hear a lot of artists go through is where you let the piece talk to you. Mm -hmm. That's the piece talking to us then. Because if this seemed like it was too blank, this is saying to you that what you got here is fine, but you can't leave this space empty because something is going on. It needs something going on in there. Right. You see... So since we took away the spoon from over here, maybe another spoon here, or maybe the chocolate falling off the the, the the plate onto the table. That's true. You know, or just another or another spoon, yeah. Yeah, or another spoon. You know what I mean? Or we can we can sneak that napkin in right here. 
if we wanted to, too. That's true. Mm -hmm. But see, I wouldn't put the words on it. I would just put the napkin there mm -hmm. and make the napkin look like it has folds and creases in it to make it, you know, pull you in even more. All right, let me see. I'm going to keep on putting this chocolate in here. And notice how I was using different lines to make me feel the perspective of this item. Because remember, we're doing pure line drawings, basically, everybody. And when you do that, it's mainly overlaps and, and blocked in areas. And especially if you wanted to scan this stuff back in. So in other words, I like using the crosshatch idea and the line idea because it looks good when you come to reproduce it in your computer. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, how we reproduce our own and put it online, you can see how, you know, they look, you know. Now, in person, they're going to feel and look a whole lot different, too, as well. But they look good online because it's a graphic image. And the computer doesn't have to work hard to make solid areas and all that good stuff. So then, yeah, you know, there we go. There's my chocolate. You know. Maybe even put some other darker sides on. You see to show that light, where light is coming from. So if you really look at it, if you go for a diner idea, like how we did last time, you notice, if you look at the other one that I did, the shadows come down and you might have multiple shadows. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't talk about that on the other one, but if you look in the photograph, look at all that on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Look at all those different light sources that's there. You see to show you different things. Okay, look inside the cup. I bring this this edge here down, so it can feel like we're looking inside the cup. You mm -hmm. see. Now on the sides of that, you see, I can take the same marker and do this type of movement, and it seems like there's a bubbly froth on the side along the edge there. You see that. Mm -hmm. So it's when to use what marking. If you notice, I use dots and dashes a lot. You see? I think there may be a bubble in there. We can put a bubble inside there if you want to. Another one is how we're going to deal with the darkness of the Danish over here and then back this way once again. But until I get there, we help the mold out and sculpt out. You see my marker starting to dry out a little bit. That's when we slide to another one. And then Sharpies are inexpensive enough now that you can buy a whole pack for like six bucks. Mm -hmm. Especially with Black Friday coming up, everybody. So I would say if you want to get, you know, more supplies and stuff, Black Friday is the time to go out and do that. You see? You're going to have awesome sales going down. See, yeah, there we go. All right. So, look, I'm going to start my shadow on this one, on this plate right here. And notice how I'm using a horizontal movement to make that seem like it's flat. I'll come back and put some more movements on it. But this is how we start making everybody feel a shadow differences slight differences i can come back over top and then put that line that hash over top in the opposite direction to make it seem even flatter you see darken the edge a little bit here and there of the plate and then the plate starts to feel even more weighty Notice how I'm not worrying about backgrounds with this one too much. You know, if you really want to look. You see, we have that impression inside the plate where it goes down. So then now I do this light one in here. You see that impression on the inside of the plate, Nadine? Mm -hmm. See, this is how you start dressing it up. So if you notice, everybody, the suggestion is Simplify first, get everything where you need it to be, where you feel comfortable with it, 
didn't come back and start making us feel all this good stuff that we're talking about now. Like, even if you look at the picture, the shadow is coming this way and then down on that paper, on that piece of sugar or creamer. So then I will come back with that single line idea again, darkening the areas there. Now you start to see what's starting to happen, Nadine. It's starting to get more character yeah. in your piece, you see. Let's see. Even here, I would bring that shadow around here, like how you see on the picture there, yeah, and then right around here. So now I would do the same thing here that I did on the inside. See, then once your confidence gets up to like how mine is, you can do these at, you know, parties out in the park. And then it grabs people's attention quick. And it's like, oh, my God, you see that artist over there working? Oh, my God, he's amazing. He just has a marker in his hand and he's just going for it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you hear in the background, everybody. Right. People who are amazed, like, oh, my God, is that just a marker? Like, you didn't do any pencil work? No, no pencil work. You see? As soon as you do it, people get crazy over it because they go, oh, wow, I couldn't do that. And, you know, that's when you start saying, oh, no, you can. It's all easy. You know, then that's when I do the line, you know, perfection is a high. Repetition is the truth. And they look at you like you're crazy, but. Uh -huh. You've made an impact, you know right. what I mean? You've made an impact because now you're doing something that they said it can't be done. But you're doing it and they can right. see clearly what's on your page. You see? So yeah, even a couple of shadow marks this way, a couple of lines like so, to show movement on the, the glistening on the plate, the highlight on the plate, you see? Oh, yeah. It's about to get dangerous in here. See, now that I put the shadows in, it's almost making us not look at that. And some of the description inside the plate, you see? Right. See how we don't really worry about that no more. Now it's like, you know, I would switch back and forth in between items to show how the spoon is looking, using the reflections. Maybe this is sitting up. I'll make a shadow coming underneath the spoon like so. So it looks like the spoon is leaning, you know, on that plate. Right. And then now it comes back and touches the ground. Bang, right there. What you think about that shadow, maybe? What you That's think? That's nice. That shadow mm -hmm. is hot. Uh, it's working with the other one. So you now you're seeing on your page how it should, you know, possibly look to make those shadows work together so that it makes sense throughout the piece. You see? Oh, yeah. This one is moving pretty good this week. This is another one where we won't have to go two weeks with it, you think? Right. No, I think we're pretty almost there. It's, this is just small things now. It's, you know, how you make us believe the pudding or the ice cream with the chocolate inside the dessert jar here. Mm -hmm. The easiest one is going to be the cup here, showing the coffee inside the cup. Because uh, if you blow it up and zoom in on the cup, there's a couple of reflections in there. But, you know, Let you can come in and just make us... Let me see... And now I put a couple of lines in there that replicates that movement. Maybe even put a couple of circles in there to show bubbles. You see what I mean? Froth and all that good stuff. You see, and then I use like a water movement inside the cup, especially if the cup has ripples inside of it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same effect like how you would have a lake or something. So you remember when we did the lake drawings that we did? Yeah. That rhythm, we want that rhythm inside the cup and leave some light areas for reflections. 
So in other words, what I would do from looking at the photograph is I would make most of my darks on the left side of the cup here, the inside. Mm -hmm. You see? So then this way, it feels like one of these rims is being hit by light some type of way. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're trying to make it feel like we're in a diner in a public space. So it's going to have multiple light sources, everybody. Now, do you have to put those light sources in? No, you don't have to. But if you want to make your piece seem like it's energized or seem like it has a certain feel of movement, you know, that's why people give certain responses on certain works that I do, because I'm thinking in that type of process. So in a lot of times you would look and you would see people respond like, oh, it seems real. It's because I'm trying to evoke that idea in my mind and hand so that when you look, you go, yeah, that was his intent without saying intent. You just look at it and say, yeah, that's coffee. Yeah, that's a Danish. I don't know what type of Danish it is, but it's a Danish. Mm hmm. You know, I, I'm still going to call it the tea Danish, you know? Right. Because <laughs> I don't remember the name you told me from earlier still, Nadine. <laughs> yeah, Tiramisu. Tiramisu. See, and I want to say two M's, Tiramisu. <laughs> Tiramisu. Tiramisu. You see, so there's rough edges on this artist that you're dealing with too as well, everybody. I can go to the finery spots and mess up, but I like having fun when I mess up. So I make the waiters and everything laugh with me. <laughs> yeah. All together now. Yeah, no, they look and they say, excuse me, what you say? I would be terrible with my suit. You know they, would, they would probably fall out laughing because everywhere I go, when I do, you know, foreign or international or elitist food, you know what I mean? Right. It happens all the time. You know, you, you I wind up getting better service and getting freebies because they laughing so hard. Like, you know, the maitre d' heard how you said so-and-so and said they wanted to send you another one over just to hear you <laughs> say it. You know what I mean? I've been yeah. in restaurants where I've done that, man. You know, French restaurants, uh, Indian restaurants, you know what I mean? Yeah. The mid-level ones. Yeah. yeah. You know. I know what you're talking about. Or something by a funny name that you heard it by, and then they looking at you laughing, and then they having so much fun laughing at you that, you know, come on, I got to give him another one of these just to hear him say this. So, he right. <laughs> so yeah. Next so, one right. on the house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To the to the, to the the American over there in the corner that's saying it funny, the big guy. Say it again, terrible move, 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 Sue. <laughs> But all right, everybody, let's look deeper into our shadow idea, you see? Because if you look into the shadow, that's tonality, and it's talking about controlling the light in a direction of light to bring interest. Mm -hmm. So if we look at our cup in there, you know, now this is where you start to say to yourself, do I use the micro marker or do I use the, uh, the regular Sharpie that I have? This is where I start looking at the micro marker and bringing that one into play now. So remember, it's the um, the uh, how would you say the Pigma micron marker, and I'm using the size 0.08. Mm -hmm. 0.05 will be a little bit too small, everybody. So we didn't want to go there. Yeah, you see, just like I thought, I got bubbles on there. So since we got the bubbles on there, now oh, let me see here. Yeah, I can't zoom in on this one now unless okay. I save it. Let's see, I'll save it. Uh, there we go. Wait. And then I'll come here. Open it. There we go. I popped it and up. Now, oh, okay. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Yeah, I see it on your screen there. Yeah, so if you look at the top of the cup there, and then look at the top of the uh, dessert there, yeah, that's a piece of chocolate in there. That's chocolate. Yeah, that's a piece of chocolate. So then if you wanted to, you still could put that piece of chocolate in there. That pudding looks stiff so because it looked like ice cream to me, Nadine. Yeah. That's how stiff it looked in the yeah. jar. So, you know, and then look at the shadows on the tabletop. See how close we are? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To what's going on. So we would follow that one on the cup. On the other one, though... Let's see, let's bring this, I'll bring this one down to get to the other one. Yeah, now when you get to the other one, that's when we use the spoon. 
And see, we don't have to blow that other photograph up. Why? Because it's already at enough size where we can see all those finite things that's in there. Look at how the, the Danish is moving in the inside there. You can use some of those darks mm -hmm. to make us believe the texture of the Danish, you know? Mm -hmm. So now look, I can come back with the, the micro marker and let's show you this idea with the micro marker in the orange peel and in the Danish that I'm talking about, okay? Mm -hmm. just to give ideas on how to, to build up more texture. So I have my micro marker here. And then now what happens is I start doing those little ovals in between that you see that says Pope, you see, but I'm not putting it all the way to the edge. You see, this is where you start playing with the direction of some of that movement and you make it suggestive as we're saying, you see, you don't want to overwork it. You're making up an oval for the Pope. You see a mark that looks like Pope in there, you see? Now, in mind, you might not see it now, but when I do the reproduction of it and I do a picture of it, you'll see those small movements in there. And it has to be in the direction of that triangle that you made, you see? But notice how I'm not putting it all the way to the edge to overdo it to make it too much texture where you can't see what's going on. It's just a couple of overlets here and there to resemble Pope. If I was to zoom all the way into this area right here, you would really start to see it more. The same thing with the Danish in here, you wanna make movements that's gonna make you believe that overall movement of the chocolate being right in this area right here. You see, so I'm using curvilinear cross-hatching movements, which means I'm using a C movement and a backward C movement. So the C movement is this way, and then sometimes I'm going, turning that movement backwards to show the, the, the movement of that texture. You see, and then now I would move it to say that it's concave or convex, you can say, you see. And it's almost like a scrumbly mark, but you can feel the texture coming to life in you on what that was possibly made out of. You know. In those lighter areas, I'm bringing some marks in to make it look like that's the webbing of the, the core of the dough when it gets cooked and you have the little bubbles on the inside and everything like that, Nadine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, and then, then your darker areas can be conceived or perceived as chocolate or shadows. You see? So if we were to do this one one week with um uh, <clears throat> with a um a real pen and ink idea, we're using crow quills and things like that in the India ink, then you would see even more how this micro marker is your friend as far as texture is concerned. You see, because this is what's developing that movement inside here to make you believe Danish, you see. Then you would have to put some dark, yeah, you're gonna have to put some darker areas in certain areas so it's more cross hatching and more overlapping of strokes to get those darker areas, but leave a white edge around some of them and you'll notice how that makes it feel. You see, so now you should start filling the textures that I have inside here. And you see the same thing that go that's going on inside of the oranges. Notice I'm not filling it all the way to the end. I'm just doing a couple in the middle at any angle that's needed to make you believe that that's porous like an orange or a lemon. Now it's up to the viewer if they want to believe it's an orange, tangerine, lemon, whatever they think, as long as they don't think it's a cookie. Yeah, that would be disappointing. <laughs> yeah, on some levels, yeah. On some levels, it would be. You know what I mean? But if they said an orange cookie, then I'll go, okay, all right, I can take that. I can take that. I can take that. Mm -hmm. 
But just if you said it was an oatmeal cookie, I'd be like, no, nah, I can't really accept that. I got to really look and see why are you saying oatmeal? Was my design looking like, rather than pulp, it started looking like raisins and bread? Mm. You see? And these are the things you want to look for, these ideas like that, you know? Like with the chocolate, I'm going to put some more lines in there. Some more darknesses here and there. You know? And who knows, I may, you know, get it past this point and then look at it later before I take a picture of it and do it again. You know what I mean? Just, you know, jump in there and do it again. Notice how I'm leaving the other Danish in that spoon and the surfaces of these items because... I don't want you to get anxiety, everybody. There's certain movements you got to use and you got to look inside there like, look, you may have reflections of this Danish inside of the spoon here, you see? And now the contrast of darks and lights is going to have to get more strict inside your piece here. So then now I got and it has to move. Because the only way that feels right is when those darks start to become real contrast. You see that there? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to reflect the, the, the Danish inside the spoon. Now you would do certain other things. Now you would. You know, you have to do certain cross hatches and things to make us believe the movement of the surface of the spoon. You see, not everything is going to be a solid, you know, transaction. You got to show some of these other movements that have looked like lighter movements. You see? It's almost starting to look like reflections. Like, I'm going to put some of this in there. Now, is there certain rules that have to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what happens is, is that as long as you got that trapezoidal shape in there, we're going to think that that's that dessert over there on that side. And in certain areas of that is going to be darker. And you see what's starting to happen now? Mm -hmm. you look at the page, I'm starting to get the roundness and the feeling of reflections on the spoon. To the point where even that's not too far away, I can put that cup in there just a little bit. Or rather, well, yeah, 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 I would put it in that way, don't you? You know what I mean? Would I actually see the inside of that spoon? No. Or see the inside of that cup and that reflection? No. But once again, the only way your viewing audience is going to know that that's not so is if they know where this photograph is. You see? And until that point, ain't nothing none of them can do. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So there's my spoon a little bit there, you see? And I just want to start making it feel like it has reflections on it. That's all. I don't want to run my marks as the same as what's on the outside because now I won't be able to tell what's on the outside and what's on the inside, you see? Well, you come back and make that shadow on the outside darker. You see, put your own highlights in here and the spoon here. Remember, when you want something to feel like it's curved, you got to replicate that curved side in the reflections inside the surface of the item. So that forces the human eye to believe that those items is really moving like that. Yeah, this is where I'll make this line in here a little bit darker. 
a little bit more continuous, you see? This is where I make those lines in there decrease just a little bit to put more darkness in here. See that? Now that spoon starts to jump out a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Same thing on the opposite side, but then now what I do is I just touch a little bit more. And then let that break off. Let that break off and then definitely write it in. Bang. You see? Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. I'm going to get me a cup of coffee now. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You didn't work that up a, a thirst. A thirst, a quenching. Yeah. A Ooh. Yeah, buddy. And I got uh, mandarin oranges over here too as well. Oh, yeah. It's looking pretty good on screen. Not looking bad. Not looking bad at all. Well, it's looking like what we wanted to look like, which is right. a spoon, you know, Danish plate. Those really look like oranges over there to me. So, yeah, I'm good on that. The coffee cup looks good. Let me work on the Danish cup. Wow, it's 1147 already. Right? The time just Yeah, flies. man. I told you, everybody, once we get grooving, all of a sudden, bam. You know what I mean? Bam shakalaka. Yeah, it's all over before you know it. You know, it's all over before you know it, everybody. So, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, sure okay, can. Cool. Sometimes this mic with the headphones, it goes, if I start moving around, it goes up and down mm -hmm. in the headphones, but it's continuous on the other side for you guys. So cool. Yeah, the Vicky to let you know that that orange got on me so bad, everybody. Look, there's your Mandarin orange. Oh, right yeah, everybody. there you go. Yeah, man, I'm not playing. That orange got me. I just don't have no chocolate in here. <laughs> Ooh, can you imagine? Oh, yeah, if I had that chocolate in here, I would play it up on one of these styrofoams real quick and then show y'all to be like, yeah, this is what imagination can get you. Keep creating, everybody. Right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mm. You see? Have fun. Put more lines in there. How about the lines on the coffee cup to show the dimension of the coffee cup? Yep. Show the darkness in the front and in the middle. Because that's where the curve is coming out the furthest to show that darkness there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you would use the curved line again everybody yeah you would use the curved line everybody to show how that darkness is on the rim there that shows the lightness of the thickness there so then look And you would deal with that idea is you see the light line in there, everybody. Mm -hmm. I start my curve movement with my micro marker. And what you should start feeling when you look on the screen, everybody, when I move out the way, is it's going to feel like this cup is, should be turning around. Now, I'm going to put more marks in there, but I just want you to see the beginning of the curving part. Like how when you look at the photograph, that edge right on the outside here is darker. And it's more darker going towards the middle of the cup than at the edge of the cup. Now, at the brim of the cup up here, it gets darker. So now you can see that white edge there. Now, when I move out the way, you should see it pretty good. What you think? Nice. You see, and then now you would play with most of that on the edge here. 
play with most of that curved idea that you're learning about why a curve looks like a curve based upon where the darknesses are. Dealing with a reflective item too as well, everybody. Because that's a ceramic or porcelain cup and they have a reflective quality. So it's like, how do you deal with that reflect, reflective quality and making us believe what's on the surface, you see? So your micro marker can help you out a bunch with those ideas and things, you see? Before we cut out of here, uh, I at least want you to understand that you can use different textual ideas to put the uh, chocolate powder on top there. You can use stippling, which would be the dots. Uh -huh. You see? Or you can use a, co a combination of dots and dashes. And go back and forth. So if I'm looking at the surface of this item, I'm trying to make you believe that it's round first or a half round. So then I do these movements on here so you can believe it's a half round first, like in the front. Just mm -hmm. echoing that edge that's there mm -hmm. and then making lines, descriptive lines that move curvilinear on a half round, like an upside down U or a large N, you know, small N, letter N, that hump. That's what this is looking like back here. And then now you would, you know, make those movements, curved movements to echo that edge. The more you do it, the rounder that item is going to seem and feel. See what's starting to happen? Mm -hmm. So if you look at mine, you can start seeing that feeling of curved movements. So the more that you use curved movements, the more you fool your viewer to believe a curve is there. especially when it comes to the surface quality or what a lot of you are going to say, detail. So whether you say surface quality or detail, it still means that we're looking at the outer later layer of the item that we're drawing. Mm -hmm. The outer surface of the item that we're looking at. You see? So then even in some of those white areas I've got, now I'm jumping over to the coffee. I can put little bubble marks in there, little round marks, and then put lines around those. And if you look inside the cup, you see little ovalettes like that inside the coffee. Mm -hmm. They're not marshmallows, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're, you know, surface stuff. So then now inside there, you don't put the lines as close together. The lines are further apart. So it seems like that's lighter than what's going on on the outside of it, you see. Mm -hmm. Even on the inside of the cup here, you can put a couple of marks that would say that that's round. You see, if you look at the inside of the cup, and then you can mimic some of those movements, that's what's going to make your, your cup even seem even more dramatic and more real to the viewing eye. The main mission, I don't care why you're drawing a cup or why you're drawing something like this, you still want to fool the viewer's eye. Oh, that's somebody upstairs. Yeah. Other workers are upstairs in their studios working on you right now. You, that's how good this mic is, so you can hear it on the mic. So, I don't know if you heard it. Did you hear it or no? Not really. Oh, Maybe okay. a hint. It was. Yeah, it was quick. But yeah, okay. Let's go back in there. Even for the sides here, I'm coming down. Let me show you that the inside of the cup is down. And then curve right up to the edge there. The same thing on the on the left side as on the right side. But keep some of the lines further apart. Why? Because if you keep some of the lines further apart, it means that it's lighter. You condense those lines together or do a bunch of overlaps, it's going to be darker. You see? Mm -hmm. So these are some of the ideas for you know trying to make things seem like they're in perspective. 
or your view and audience, whoever that audience may be. Notice how if you look at the cup, the shadow comes off the cup right down behind the fog on the edge there. You see, and we can scrumble lines together to get us to start to believe that movement. See, yeah, it's starting to happen. And it happened. Yeah, you see. So then now you can look at the the uh, chocolate on the bottom of this one and then start putting in lines or scrumbly lines. So a lot of lines, a lot of times I use scrumbly lines as overlaps, you know, little wiggles that I, I'll wiggle, wiggle, then wiggle one way, then wiggle back another way. So it's like a wiggly crosshatch. Mm -hmm. But the mission is, is to get it to gradually to build up to a darkness that I can control to make you believe something is there. You see that there? Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be exactly what's there, but if you look at this and you look at what's in our picture, our photo reference, we have an expression of what's there. That's what I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. I don't even worry about it looking exactly like the item. I don't even think like that anymore. I just think about what's there that I can put here on my piece to make us believe that even more. You know, so I do it like that, you know, even in here. You know, some of the darknesses here start off lightly with some of these darknesses with the lines further apart before I make them ultimate dark. You see, now that's a line here for the top of the glass, right? I have to leave that in there so now all the darknesses are over top of that thing. You see? And now I do a basic line first just to show where the texture is moving inside there, you see? Just to make it, everybody, we in it. You got to look in there, you get in there with your micro marker. I'm 18 by 24, everybody. I think Nadine is doing hers 11 by 14. 11 by 14, yep. Mm -hmm. You see, so then now I'll come in here and do some of these movements slightly to show that that's a, a, a more of a liquid substance, you know, and it's being white. So then now I'm not going to put too many lines that that's going to make it seem like that chocolate and, and creamy color are one and the same. No, I want you to believe that it's something separate going on. And now this is where you come down and you start darkening certain areas, but leave some areas perfectly white. Not because you're trying to say it's like that cream on the inside. You're trying to show reflections of that being glass. Mm -hmm. And it's a thicker glass. So at the edges, if you zoom in on the piece, everybody on your own, or if Nadine does it, you'll see at the edges of a glass item like that, that's almost like tempered glass or it's thick, you're going to see little white areas of reflection at the corners before you see the items on the inside. You see? That's going to denote the idea of the thickness of that particular piece of glass. And if you look, you see it. It's, high, it's like a nice, slick little design in there. You see, now if you look, the left side of this glass is reflecting all the white of the plate back up into it. Now, even though we're seeing a little bit of the uh, stuff on the top of the class, it's still the same idea that I'm talking about. Keep it away from the edge a little bit at that point. On this side, on the left side, don't put as many lines close together because all the detail is going to be where on the top. So we got to make this side seem like it's reflective. How do we do that? By controlling the darks and lights in other areas, you see? So then now this is where I use these smaller dashes that I was talking about with you to start to formulate where the, the, the design and the, the features is going for this stuff on the inside, whether it be pudding or it be uh, uh, ice cream, like I'm saying. So put it to you this way, everybody. As long as the person, when they look at your piece, say ice cream or pudding, mm -hmm. then you're good. That's what I would say. 
if they look in your cup here and then they go soup or, you know what I mean, or coffee, I'll still be okay with that because coffee is nothing more than bean soup. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't really get upset about that. With our log here, you know what I mean? We want them to feel like it's a Danish, not like it's a bur burrito or a burrito. I hope I said that right. Yeah, the burrito is the one that we all like. The burrito is the one that the uh, is kind of like cooked with the cheese on top and everything else with all the crackling and stuff. Mm. Oh, we don't want it to look like one of those store brand, you know, industrial tacos. You know, what I mean? right? <laughs> or or um, what's the other one? The pop tart. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, yeah, because it kind of gives off that feeling. So. Now we know the top of that Danish is darker than the innards. Mm -hmm. So then this is where we come back and start doing those dash movements smaller now to play up the richness and the darkness of the chocolate on top, right to the edge of where the cake is exposed, from where you either took a bite or you ran your knife and your fork through that and you got busy real quick. <laughs> real busy. Yeah, you say, oh, man, let me hold on a second. I remember. Let me take a picture for these guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't blame you, Nadine. Uh-uh-uh. Because with me, the whole plate will be half missing. Like, dang, Donnie, what are we drawing? The remnants of your carnage? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's why you got to take the picture real quick before you dive in. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's what I'm victim of. I, you know, I miss out every now and then. I don't get started and like, oh well, that's not enough to take a picture of. Right. And then keep it moving. You see, but you notice as we're talking, everybody, I'm trying to put those marks in and make that top darker. You see, you know, make some lighter areas in there. Because if you look at that chocolate, you know, bar. Or that Danish or that, that cake or that roll, however you want to call it. Or that tea Danish, as I'm calling it, you know. <laughs> you know, Tiramisu, you'll notice ter in, in that tiramisu, everybody, you can see that in the chocolate layer up top that's powdered, you have lighter and darker areas in that you see that you can take advantage of. Mm-hmm. There's certain texture surface movements that you can take advantage of, you see. You know, and then that's what you want to do. But you definitely want to do these curved movements, these curved dashes that I'm doing to make it really feel like that item is curved, like how it is in the photograph. You want to overemphasize that movement even more. You see, because what's going to happen with a lot of these, everybody, is either you're going to put it in a frame or something the way it is, or you may Xerox it or copy it, photocopy it or or, or scan it to, uh, how would you say, put color to it later. You see, so these are some of the opportunities that you have. Even if you don't have Photoshop and all these other picture uh, uh, programs and illustration and, and, and graphics programs, you still can, with the basic ones that you have on your phone, you still can do a lot with them. Most of the pictures that you see when I'm posting is edited with the phone's uh, uh, apps. You see? So just to let you know, if you start playing with the app on your phone to go to Vista, you see all yeah. these different things and um, duotone and uh, the sharpness, the contrast, the cropping as well. Uh, the aligning your photograph, you know, where it seems like I may have taken a picture crooked and I'll use that alignment to straighten out the photograph. That's all in your phone's programs. Then you can actually heighten it. So whereas you would see all these subtle grays in between instead of it being a straight piece of white paper, if you play with that, then, you know, you're going to get a white piece of paper, then. especially if you put in, you look at some of the filters that you can use. So the Vista that I use a lot, uh, uh, the filter that I use a lot is Vista. And if that's on your phone, you'll see that it's like a strict black and white 
filter. Works very well with line drawings and especially marker drawings. Mm -hmm. Then in some of your phones, you'll have a thing called it look like a spark, like a like a firecracker burst or something. Mm -hmm. And it'll either say enhance or it might say brighten and darken. Mm -hmm. But if it says enhance, you want to press that. And what it does is it enhances the imagery and the lightness and darknesses in your piece or the color in your piece to yep. boost it up, you see. Yep. Because on a on a digital realm, you want to boost everything up. Now, that's not like on Facebook where you press boost and it goes to multiple people. No. Yeah. What, what I'm saying on your device now is when you press boost inside of your photo manipulation uh, program that comes with your phone, they have areas inside there where you can press enhance or boost depending upon what type of phone you have. And it makes, and what it, more, makes it more vibrant. There you go. Yep. And sometimes you need that little bit of edge. Yeah, because your light may be a little bit dull and you didn't pay attention to that. But especially if you want to try to reproduce and copy uh, images, you want to do that enhancing the brightening and the vibrancy. You know, you, you definitely want to deal with those. You know, saturation too as well. When, when you get good, you can really start understanding those things, the saturation, the contrast, the vibrancy. Once you understand all of that, then you really can manipulate a photograph to get the best or the most out of the image, as mm -hmm. they would say. But yeah, everybody, this is it. This is where we're at. And, you know, some of you could probably say you're done. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it if you said you were done. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But then I would like for you to look around, like look on the table or not really the table, look on the items and see if there are other darks and lights or scratchy or sketchy lines that you could use to show depth of scale, to show that things are moving, you see, mm -hmm. to show that things are round, rounder than what they are. You see, can you control the lightnesses and darknesses in areas by keeping lines further apart to denote lightness and keeping lines closer together that, that would show uh, uh, how would you say darknesses or various degrees of darknesses? You see, as soon as you put another line over top, it starts to do what? Get a little bit what we would call darker. So you can control the value of line drawings by if you keep lines tight together or loose together. And the way the human mind or your human audience is going to read that is that, oh, that's a lighter area. This is a darker area, you see. Oh, all those lines are together. That's got to be a darker area. These lines are looser and more open. That's got to be white or yellow or some, some type of bright color, you see? And then you just keep adding on. Now, I know I'm doing some jumping now. I'm doing the jumping because I want you guys to have an opportunity to understand as many parts of the piece as you can. Because I know off camera, everybody's going to touch up their piece and try to bring more of it to life and all that good stuff, which is understandable and which is what is suggested. So if you know all the mark making or inventive ways of making a mark, then you can start making up some of your own ways, you see? So now if you look at mine, I got the difference between that creamy and the chocolate idea in there. You see, and all I want is just the feeling that feeling of it being almost the same or expressing the same feeling that 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 they did on the camera, which is what I'm about to have a, a delicious pre brunch after dinner, after lunch, after breakfast type of, you know, dessert Danish idea. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, Nadine lets us know that no, no, Don, this was an earlier in the day. This was like a later after evening or early evening thing before dinner or after dinner. Yeah, I think it was an afternoon thing, not okay. an early morning thing. Okay, cool. You see, but this is how some of these things work, everybody. And, you know, just what, that would be the four course meal idea at that point, you know? I think that's four course at that point. Yeah, Danish and everything else. 
But hey, if we if I'm saying something out of whack, hey, leave us a message and let me know. Hey, Don, you, when the last time you've been to a diner or a real upscale, you know what I mean, diner? Like I'm still calling the word diner. I don't call it a restaurant. You know, mm-hmm. that looks like diner food to me, especially when you see that ceramic cup or that porcelain cup. That's all you see in diner cuisine. You know what I yeah. mean? So, you know. So if you enjoy diner food as much as me, everybody, now you would understand why I'm always screaming, diner, diner, diner. Diner, diner. Yeah. Diner in the house. Yeah, because in Philly, man, at one point, that's all I, where I was eating during my college years. Yeah. Because at diners, they would have a $3 or $4 egg deal. You know what I mean? And then you can have lunch and breakfast all day long in a diner. Mm-hmm. So I would go and just get pancakes all the time. Pancakes, waffles, omelets. Especially the one that's on Spring Garden, everybody. If you're in Philadelphia, there's a nice one on Spring Garden that's open every now and then. And they have excellent, like, flapjack waffles and flapjack pancakes. What I mean is they'll fill them with apples, strawberries, you name it, certain fillings that they have. Mm -hmm. And then, you know... It's a it's a cornucopia of just uh, goodness all over your plate, and it actually is a is a flapjack. It, it fills the whole plate, so they give you a nice size plate on purpose so you can see this phenomenon. So if you're a fat guy and greedy like me, you really yeah. appreciate them. Yeah, I used to tell the cook all the time, "Thank you, sir. Oh, you're yeah. beautiful." You know what I mean? You're a beautiful person and an excellent human being cooking back there like that. <laughs> right? You know? So, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. You see? So, if you see all these little light movements and things that I'm doing on the plate here, is to represent residual shadows or ambient shadows or, you know, reflections and things that's happening. You know, even for my plate here, we didn't we don't have a, a shadow for the plate, you know what I mean? But now I could, you know, put that shadow there. Uh put a little bit of a shadow here for the plate, you see, and then make it come short. So then now I can come back with the other marker. Oh, uh, you heard that one. I know you did. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't me, everybody. That's my neighbor's upstairs. He's a woodworker. So I have no way of knowing when people's schedules are. So you just keep working, you know what I mean, around just different things. Just keep working through it. Yeah, yeah. I don't complain. Because I know sometimes I play the music loud or sometimes I'm loud with you guys on the phone mm-hmm. and on the uh, the video. And then I'm disturbing other people. And then, you know, I'm the same way. I tell them. But I, I used to have a couple of neighbors that would complain. And I'll be like, look, you don't, there's no need to complain because I don't know your schedule. You don't know my schedule. Right. So how can we even complain? You know what I mean? All I would say is, is that if you hear me, just be mindful. Same way I am with you. I'll be mindful if I hear you recording. Oh, okay, let me keep my music down because they're recording next door. You know what I mean? Or upstairs and stuff like that. So a lot of times I'll say something louder so they can possibly hear me upstairs because they don't have no radio or nothing going. And then there's holes in the ceiling, you know, that go all the way through from previous people having things bolted to the ground. Right. So then they can hear me, you know what I mean? So and see, that's why I calmed down a little bit. Because they can hear me doing a discussion with you on the phone. They can hear a little bit of me giving instruction and things like this. So it's like, oh, it sounds like somebody's doing a podcast downstairs. Yes. (laughs) Yes, I am. You see? Look at that, everybody. See how I got the shadow on that side, Nadine? How do you feel about that? Looking good. Uh, You know, we got to check out and see what you're doing now. You know, come soon. But the whole idea is to go with directional forces, everybody. And if you notice how I'm doing that, it gets the eye to believe things even more. 
Mm -hmm. See, so now this shadow I would definitely put underneath this plate in the front. You know, who knows? By another hour, when I look at it again, I may change, not change, but add on some things like I did in the other one. Yep. I you looked know. at it and I was like, oh, boy, he added more. Yeah. See, what I did was is the, the, the idea that I was talking about in the beginning, everybody, the double shadow sources. So, but if you look at the, the uh, source material that Nadine provided for us, you can see that there's multiple light sources on those shadows on the table. And that's what I was mimicking. The idea that in public spaces, public communal spaces, there's that's not only, yeah, it's not only just one light source. You'll have several different reflections of shadows going in different directions. And all I'm trying to do is use that as a design element or element of intrigue, you see? Mm -hmm. So then I will come back and this is where I would use the micro marker in some of those situations. You see, like mm -hmm. here, and you see, like it seems like a double shadow now. Yeah, yeah. And that's all it is. Now it doesn't. Yours doesn't have to look like mine, Nadine, and everybody else. But you just want to get that feeling of a double shadow source. You see. So a lot of times the double shadow would come from the opposite side here and then loop into the other shadow. Because a lot of times there's going to be a, a light source that's pretty much the same on both sides, except for one shadow is going to be lighter than the other. Whichever light that you're closest to is going to be your main light source. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is a double-double. So then that's when I come back with this marker, the micro marker. And now you're just using the scrumbly line idea. You could come in with a ruler if you wanted and then do ruling marks like that, but it's going to take you forever. So if you get impatient like me with yourself sometimes, then I would just use that loose scrumbly line. If you have the patience, everyone, and you really want that nice rule line, then you would take a straight edge or a ruler and then now you would put the pen at the edge and bevel it a little bit and then line it across, line it across and then move it up as you go. Mm -hmm. So maybe one week I'll give a, you know, demonstration on that so you can see it and see what to do with that and see how to really do that. You know, also everybody, just to let you know, we might have coming up in December an opportunity to have a pen and ink lesson or a workshop with me over at Maniunk Roxboro Art Center. Oh, nice. Over in, yeah, over in Maniunk in Roxboro. So it's going to be a three-hour uh, course. It's going to cost uh, 40 bucks, and all you have to do is bring yourself, or if you want, you can bring supplies, but I'm going to have supplies there. So, you mm -hmm. know, uh, if you do or don't have supplies, we'll have paper, ink, and some markers. And I'll definitely have the pen nibs, the crow quills, and holders for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, look for that coming soon, everybody. It'll probably be way before Christmas comes down the pike. Nice. Yeah, we. I did plan to have one, which, was, which would have been yesterday, everybody. But, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't iron out, you know, the specifications properly. Me and the young lady, Heather, we didn't connect properly because she had things she had to do. I'm running and doing things. Mm -hmm. So we had to hang up the Saturday course for yesterday. Okay. So then now, yeah, you know, but it's okay. We got people that were interested and we we let them know, hey, mm -hmm. we, 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 we didn't realize that you guys was going to react. So thank you for reacting. If you don't mind, we'll understand if you, you know, want a total refund. If you don't mind, we're moving that date to a date coming soon, you'll know by the end of November what that date will be. And a couple of people stayed on, a couple of people voiced their opinion. But like how I say, it's still right, you know what I mean, to voice their opinion. I had to tell the other young lady, um, hey, don't worry about it. If people get disgruntled, it's their right. They're, they're mad. They was anticipating doing a drawing, a pen and ink drawing class with us this weekend. I know that can probably be very disappointing to some people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just let it be. We gave them the option to have the other one come up and we'll see if they'll change their mind before Christmas gets here. You know? mm -hmm. 
So yeah, yeah. things do happen. You got to mm -hmm. have everything come together. Yeah. So then that's what I'm saying. That's that that there. So I'll let you know, Dave, Dean, if when she does the advertisement or I do the advertisement. Yeah, so we can start spreading the word. Right, yeah. So it's only 40 bucks for three hours and you don't have to bring any supplies. So that's a reasonable price for a workshop considering that you're not bringing any supplies. Some of the ones that I've had done will be 75 to 100 bucks because you don't have supplies. You know right. what I mean? Right. So take advantage of this you know, incredible price for you to get to understand pen and ink and marker. So it's going to, I think it's what I called it was pen, ink, marker, and me. Mm -hmm. Something like that. That's what the name of the class or the workshop is going to be. And it's three hours. So we're going to be going from 12 to three o'clock, everybody. Mm -hmm. Or we might do 11 to two. So that's still what we're negotiating. And it's definitely going to be on a Saturday, everybody. Okay. So if you're hearing this and you want to check it out, uh, it's uh, Manny Hunt Roxborough, the MRAC has a, a Facebook uh, 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 page and an a Instagram page. So you can do a search for Manny Hunt Roxborough Art Center or the MARC. Oh, excuse me, MRAC, MRAC, as I used to call it, Manny Hunt Roxborough Art Center. It's right on Green Street, everybody. So, yeah. and yes, parking would be an issue. <laughs> so, the earlier you get there is residential. So, all the residential people are all parked up by about you know certain times, especially on Saturday. If it's on a weekday, then it's definitely going to be crowded because most of my classes that used to start out there would start after five o'clock. So, I would have classes that would start from six to eight, two hours, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? So by the time you get there, that time of the day, most of all the parking spots are ate up because everybody that, you know, that's residential is back home from work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Look, I'm going to sign mines early, everybody. Even though it's not finished, I'm still going to sign mines early so we can have that on video. Okay. And if you're this close, everybody, I would say you can say your piece is finished if you wanted to. Right. D. Stevens right there. Now, some people will argue. You see how I signed my name there, everybody? Right. I believe in the John Con John Hancock way. They say that John, Con John Hancock signed his name that way because he knew everybody was signing, so he wanted to be seen. Mm-hmm. That's why he did his name large like that. And that's why it's called uh, giving us your John Hancock. Mm. Because now I want it to be large, clearly written, legible, and impactful to mm. John Hancock's signature. So if you look at the Constitution, you see his name jumping right out. You know what I mean? You see others that try to follow behind him after he did it. But it was too late. You can see his name clear as day so I like that. I've gotten complaints from people about where my name was, especially if I've done illustrations for people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's still the same thing. It's it's not just about the storyline when you're doing the illustration. It's about who did the, the illustration to as well. And that's your and, way to advertise. Uh, yeah. So then I said, I agreed with one person and I said, okay, why not? I take the, 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 the ending off and just put DS somewhere. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Some people went with it. Some people were like, no, I don't really appreciate that. It destroys the feeling of my book. And I said, mm -hmm. all right, okay, well, I, I'm just going to have to miss out on this opportunity then. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't believe it, but yeah, if I can't, you know, and then I'm not reassured if you're going to put my name on the front and the back cover to say who the illustrator is and, you know, so I can get illustrator points. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. Some people, you know, they just don't understand that part of the management in the in the business of art making at that point. Because if they win a contest and I win the award for being the illustrator of that book. Yeah. And that's where all your gold, silver, and platinum on uh, children's books, if you ever go to the bookstore and you look, they'll have, you know, double stars on it. That means that the a star was for the writing of it and then and another star was for the illustration. 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll have three for the graphic design, illustration, and the writing. You see what I'm saying? And then they'll say how masterful this piece is, and it's number one on the New York, the New York, you know, booksellers list and things like this, or the bestsellers list and mm -hmm. things like that. And that's what you really want the writer and illustrator, you know, remarks in the in the piece, because if it does win over the eyes and the hearts of everybody in society, yeah, they have awards for that. And the award for illustrated, I think you get like the 50 to 100,000, as well as the writer does too. Or I think the writer gets the 100,000 and the illustrator may get a 10 to 20,000 award. And because they take it into, yeah, they take it into account all the, the books that were brought out mm -hmm. or introduced to the public for that period of the year. Mm -hmm. So it's not just your book. It's like it's a you know, say for instance, it's five thousand books, five thousand children books that their their opening date was yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that means that you would be in competition with all those children books. Wow! And then after that, now you know, after what a month or so, they'll say, or if the 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 the, the data comes back. Say for instance, oh, Nadino and Don Stevens uh, illustrations of uh, tea, <laughs> tea, Danish and coffee. <laughs> right. I see you still working on it. Hey, I'm still working on it. You know what I mean? Coloring book and in, in book for for young adults and adults hit mm -hmm. number one on the list in the first week because we sold two hundred thousand copies or three hundred thousand copies or a right. million copies. You know, now our work gets, you know, the star on it, the platinum stars. Mm -hmm. You know, you would get the platinum star for writing and things. I would get platinum star for the illustration. Mm -hmm. You would possibly get the 60,000 and I would probably get like anywhere from in between 10 and 20,000 as an award. Mm -hmm. And that's how that works. And then it goes on the times list. And then now... If you go to Time Magazine and most of the other upper echelon periodicals, then you would see our book there. And that's something? Yeah, and then it would get more awards, you know, based upon the philanthropy that's out there and the impact that the imagery and the words are making together. Mm -hmm. So every artist wants that. So I ain't gonna lie. Some right. of the books that I've seen with them, you know what I mean? I'd be like, dang, got away with a simple drawing too. Right. You know what I mean? But, you know, hey, it's it's how you do them to, to get that attention. And you got to put the work in to get that attention. So, you know, I do think about that a little bit, everybody, because periodicals, illustrations for books and things like that. If you ever wanted one, hey, give us a call. You yeah. know, let me know what's going on with your budget and things like that so we can iron out a price. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, you can have Don illustrate a book for you too, whether it be a, a picture book, a children's book, cartooning, you know, real illustrations, you know, all those different techniques I know how to do and we can bring them to life for your words. Your poets out there too as well. Absolutely. If you guys need illustrations because you're making a poetry book, I would love to work with you and collaborate with you. Any poet that's out there, you know, and then hopefully we can introduce that to our crowd here and have you do an open reading and we show the illustrations on our page. But, you know, until that happens, hey, the, the opportunity is open to all our writers and diverse verses over there in Delaware, all the poets that's there. If you, you know, watch this video and hear us and watch it to this point, know that this is an open challenge to everybody out there. You know, if you've got poetry, books, and things like that, hit us up on our yep. page. Let's see how we can collaborate that way. Absolutely. You know? And it doesn't even go that far. You, we're talking where we can help you put together eBooks mm -hmm. that will also include uh, personalized interviews, which yeah, is okay. coming from my yeah. end with yeah. as content, digital content creator. To be okay. able to sit down and get that edited for you, and that'll be a part of your ebook. There it is. I mean, dreaming is one thing, making it happen and connecting with other people yeah. to get you there. It's all about collaboration. 
Got to. Can't do it by yourself. It's only so far you're going to get by yourself. Believe you me, you guys. I know. You know, yeah. most of you that's been with me for a while, you know, Don's been a one arm, a one man army. But, you know, to be quite honest with you, um, that's hard to do if you don't have an abundance of economics at that point. And even True. then, you're going to be hiring out people to do certain things. And it's not, it, so my yeah, so my collaboration with Nadine is is a real cool one, and I appreciate it a whole yep. bunch. Same because here. after a while, it gets to a point where you say, "Man, can I keep doing this? How many years I'm gonna do this by myself?" Yep. And that's why I'm happy for my collaborations. I do have other collaborations. They're not yep. willing to open up and talk about it just yet. But Nadine and I, Nadine O and Don Stevens, Don Stevens. let's paint and draw Don't along, know. you know what I mean? Right. Is uh, our number one uh, 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 collaboration. And we're going to keep on pushing the brand, you know what I mean? And push, it'll push. stick. I had two people buy the uh, Don Stevens logo. Right. And one person, yeah, and one person was looking for our logo for what we do on Sundays. Oh, so okay. I, got, I thought I had that up in there. And, I thought and it. A pop-up yeah. page. But it was okay. on my other, the website that's down right now. Okay. So today I'm going to put that on a pop-up page, everybody. So our logo for Let's Paint and Draw Along will be on there too as well. Okay, good. All, All right. right. Yeah, because it is important. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's branding. It's our brand now. We've, we've done at least a good three years worth of work. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. a brand now. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we know... We, we, you know, just got to carry it on and more people will catch on. I'm getting emails from people that's catching on mm -hmm. and we'll just see more. That's all. We just got to keep on, you know, on our, how would, how would, how would you say our plan of, you know, what we're going to do next, how we're going to expand the idea, push mm -hmm. the idea more and things like that. Yeah. New year is coming. New ideas will be coming with that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Because uh, I will be sharing some changes that are uh, going on on my end. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's exciting. And I know that other people are doing the same. So, you know, there'll be more about that. Definitely. Okay. Come the yeah. coming new year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So well, my me, goodness, it's mm -hmm. 1230. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, Nadine. We up there in time. We we yeah. we put that 30 minutes back in. That took us 30 minutes to start. We put that 30 back in there. Yeah. And this is what we have. I might take mine a little bit further, a little bit later, but I'm comfortable with this if it was a, a finished deal. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with this as far as marker is concerned. Well, I feel like um starting to become more familiar with my own mark making. There you go. That's what uh, we need. I would I would say that I learned a lot from um what my experiences were today. Mm -hmm. Um do I have some criticisms of what I'm looking at personally? Yes. But then on the other end, I'm really proud about what I was able to put on paper. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And, Let's see um, real quick before we get off. If you can. If not, we'll worry about it for oh, um next okay. week before we get started like before oh, we get started next week we can see. look at them again i thought it was up let me see hold on okay let me look on the screen here yeah i had it up let's see can you see it hold on let me okay yeah i see it yeah so you know there was some yeah air. way to go yeah, it's not an error. Energy. You put a what's that? A dollar? Oh no, that's the lemons. Up, I mean, the, the oranges up there. Don't look at it like you said. You, what you're about to do to tear yourself down? No, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm let's proud about what, some. Yeah, let's look at what absolutely is working. Well, I love the little pastry, the ice cream in a in a container. Yes. Okay. Excellent. The coffee is working good. The coffee. Um, there's some areas, but mostly I I was seeing. I was working out the liquid, the coffee, the actual coffee in the mug. Well, that, 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 that feels good to me. Okay. And uh, my plates, you know. Uh, it's okay. They're whimsical. They're, They're whimsical. whimsical. Um, you got to work on them because we, we took the context out. So in yeah. other words, I didn't talk about it, Nadine, but I'll talk about it more next week when we do another one. 
mm -hmm. uh, uh, and marker is that once you got to figure out where your horizon line or your point of view is going to be when you're taking two photographs together, mm -hmm. you can take one of the photographs and make that the perspective. So what I did was I took the, the, the plates and made the perspective with the plates. Now with the, the other plate for the for the Danish and the dessert, you would mm -hmm. have to make it adhere to what those plates is doing. And then the point of view would be in the upper left-hand corner. The horizon line will be above the edge of the paper. Okay, gotcha. You see? Mm -hmm. So it's all about understanding point of view. So right. I'll discuss that some more next week since you had a di di uh, dilemma with that. Mm -hmm. We'll go over that a little bit more. Or I may come on on Wednesday. Oh, and then just say a couple of things Wednesday and then bleep out. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? About mm -hmm. that matter. Mm -hmm. right. So yeah. we have options. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and I'm sure other people probably might be thinking about that too. Um, but uh, in terms of, you know, really getting more comfortable with my mark making, I mm -hmm. am, um, I'm discovering new things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I get more comfortable with that, um, the muddiness will go away. Like there are a couple of areas where I felt were a little bit muddy. Well, so, muddy meaning uh, unclear about what how to resolve that area. That's all that means. Right, right, right. Thank you. Yeah. So then when, when you start building up more of a revenue of mark making mm -hmm. that you can remember from piece to piece that works, that's mm -hmm. going to clear up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The perspective it, thing as well. Mm -hmm. That's why I made mention to that earlier, because mm -hmm. as we go along more and more, you're going to start to see that for yourself. Mm -hmm. These are things that I can't put timing on when you're going to see it. It just and has to happen. It, it just has to happen. And it's based mm -hmm. upon repetition. Repetition yep. is key. Whether you're looking, using the um the artist's eye, just looking mm -hmm. and mimicking and, and having that display in your in your brain of your hand moving. Mm -hmm. Or the actual of you working and you seeing your hand moving. It has yes. to work. You don't know when it's going to click. And you don't, don't know, know the when number. It's click. Right. You don't know the number of repetition that's going to make it, you know, stay in your brain and your memory. Mm -hmm. All I know is when that number is hit, your body, your brain, your hand, your eye, it just says, yeah, we're ready. We got it. Boom. And then you just add it to your toolbox and you keep going. So, oh, yeah, just like it. for Nadine, everybody, just... Add it to your toolbox. This one here, yeah, it may be, the plate may be straight out there, but it may give it a certain character that other people may enjoy. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So before you say it's wrong, Nadine, oh, I like yeah. to inject to you, uh, hey, maybe your symmetry and asymmetry has a certain character that, deal, that delves into who you are that makes your audience appreciate the movements even more, mm -hmm. i.e. that style. Mm -hmm. So don't sweat that. Just keep working. Mm -hmm. And these other things will work out as you're putting it into thought. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would say to you, because you're always struggling with the idea of the perfection. And it's only because of your occupation and what you do as a professional. So you're dealing with it all day. Everybody, we all do it. it don't, don't feel bad. You know what I mean? When I say yeah. perfection is a lie and repetition is the truth. I'm not trying to say that I'm separate from you. I'm a human being, too. Mm -hmm. I want things to look immaculate too. But no, notice how I use the word immaculate over perfection. Mm -hmm. Notice I use repetition rather than perfection. Mm -hmm. You see, so that's what I would say to you. Try to figure out what these terms mean to you and what feels good when you're working to you. Mm -hmm. We know what's actually there, yeah, mm -hmm. But some of those whimsical things and those mishaps of the human eye is character that we all like to see as humans. Because mm -hmm. I know when I go to a new museum or a gallery, or even if I'm at a restaurant where they have artwork up, I look at people's work and I see, yeah, I see why that, that area looks like it's confusing because that would be confusing to me too. How do I develop that area of whatever the piece is, you see? Mm -hmm. And then that's art criticism at that point. But you're helping yourself out the whole time. Mm -hmm. So it's 1240. You're not your guys. Sorry for talking art. You know, <laughs> I can talk forever. Me, me and Nadine, we can talk yeah. artwork for hours and we'll mess up everything. Mess so up we don't, everything. Yeah, we don't want to miss out. Today, I don't have any, any students. So I'm in the studio today working things out mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So and I have to be respectful because I know Nadine is probably going to be moving outward to go towards, you know, the gigging. You know what I mean? 
I got 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 some connections to make. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Okay. Absolutely. All yep. right. But this was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in in the rebroadcast. Uh, we thank uh, all our friends over on Twitch that actually take some time to check out the video. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yes, absolutely. And we're just trying to get on different platforms to see where people are most comfortable being in. And as a matter of fact, if you are and have watched this to the end, I want you to put in a comment section below. What is your favorite platform and the platform that you spend the most time in? We want to find that out because maybe we'll push that even harder and um, reach out to you then. It's so important. And the other thing is, <laughs> I keep thinking, you know, when your eyes are open, it's on. So keep your eyes open. Keep yeah. observing. Uh, you want to reach out. You want to get any of this merch. Uh, go over and um, find Don Stevens on Instagram until we get the uh, website up in um with yeah, I'll be sending weeks. that out today over yes. to you. The, yes. The uh, pop-up store uh, uh, line tagline. Okay. And everything else, okay? All right. That sounds great. And then I'll push that out. Um, okay. uh, so, everyone. Oh, uh, I'll give it to him now real quick. It's Don it's, it's, uh, Don dash Stevens dash art dot me backslash Pitify dot me backslash products. Okay. So you more. can see it on the page that's there. Okay. On, on, on my page. So it'll be Don mm -hmm. Dash Stevens mm -hmm. Dash Art mm -hmm. dot uh me mm -hmm. backslash mm -hmm. printify ooh yeah printify uh oh I think I messed it up everybody <laughs> you know what send the link I'll send the send link the everybody link, I thought everybody I had it on the can brain. just click on it and go right to it so there's no questions no doubt about yeah, it and if you dog. are a facebook member you're in our group or you've joined our page um it will be right there in the feed but if not i'm going to be dropping that sharing that later on the other platforms okay, okay? Mm -hmm. so we appreciate you we thank you for joining us do let us know what your favorite platform you like to be on live on create on and we'll see what we can do. We got a limited budget, but we're trying to bring keep you creating and That's keep it. bringing you this content and giving you other opportunities to actually focus more on a particular particular aspect of of creating, like yeah. what's going to be happening at the Maniunk Maniunk Art Center. Yeah, Maniunk Roxborough Art Center. Maniunk Maniunk Roxborough Art, Art Center. Center. M R A C. Okay, M-A-R-C. So stay tuned for that. Best place to go, even if you just, just to check in, is mm -hmm. go to Facebook and join the Facebook group there. Let's paint and draw along. So we want you to have a beautiful week and we'll see you again real soon. Yep. And we'll see you after Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, see you after Thanksgiving, y'all. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You know what? You I know. know I already know. We'll be on here talking for another 15 minutes, Nadine. <laughs> That's right. We got to go. But we yeah. want you to keep creating. creating. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Take care. Peace, love, and happy news. Yeah, God bless everybody. God bless.